Hi everyone, this is Chris and welcome to a DML tutorial. For this tutorial, I am using the mission T040 Helo Rescue Action .miz. It should be linked below and you can download it and explore it on your own time. In this video, I will show you how a mission designer can add the ability to add SAR mission capability helicopter missions to rescue downed pilots. In the past, I've been asked how much of an effort it is to add some of DML's more prominent features to a mission and how to do that. The fact is that DML offers a large variety of ready-to-use features that you can add to your missions. Features like troop transport for helicopters, helicopter rescue missions, our focus for today, civilian air traffic for the entire map, anti-griefing to automatically remove players who behave childishly, protection from SAM missiles, submarine hunting and many, many more. So it is small wonder when people get discouraged after they take a first glimpse at the sheer volume of things that DML can do for you. Not to mention a manual that really looks bigger than it actually is. Fact is that all of DML's drop-in features can be added with very little effort in next to no time. Adding helicopter rescue ability to your missions, for example, can be done in less than a minute. Alright then, let's start. Since this is a tutorial, in this video we'll take our time and explore a little bit. Before we start adding Tsar to your mission, let's look at what we are about to do. When you add Tsar to your mission, players gain the ability to conduct rescue missions. In such a rescue mission, a player flies a troop transport helicopter to an infantry unit, pick them up and return them to a safe zone. Everything you need for that ability, including guiding a helicopter to a downed pilot, is contained in the Tsar Manager module. Another module, AutoTsar, automatically creates rescue missions whenever a pilot, player or AI ejects from their aircraft. This is especially helpful in long server-based missions, where these Tsar missions emerge from gameplay. We'll add this module as well. So here is what we are going to do today. First, we are going to add all DML modules that we need to get SAR Manager and Auto SAR running in our mission. It's not required that you start with a new mission. You can add SAR Manager and DML to existing missions without any problems. Next, We'll add safe zones so players can return the pilots that they rescue. At this point, our mission is fully Tsar ready and we could stop here. Finally, and to explore a bit further, we are going to add some handcrafted Tsar missions so we can test Tsar functionality and show how easy it is to create randomized Tsar missions, which is invaluable to increase replayability. Let's get going. Start Mission Editor and open an existing mission or create a new one. All DML modules are built on smaller modules and SAR Manager is no exception. Looking at the documentation, we find that in order to function properly, it needs a number of modules added to your mission. You will always find these under the Dependencies header in the documentation of any module. SAR Manager is one of the greediest modules in this regard. In order to run it, you will need to add the following modules to your mission. DCS Common and CFX Zones, these are the bedrock modules that all DML modules need, so no surprise here. CFX Player, a module that helps with player management, Namestats and Cargo Super, 
These help managing a helicopter's weight and CFX commander so we can add Tsar missions by hand. Also, since we want to add Auto Tsar, we look up the requirements for that module. Under Dependencies, Auto Tsar requires DCS Common and CFX Zones, we already have those, and Tsar Manager itself. So, our list is complete and we can start. First, we add a new Admission Start trigger, call it Load DML, and add all required modules to that trigger as a do script action. I made a separate video that shows how to do this in detail, so we'll skip this part. The final list should look like this. Now that we have DML import safely behind us, we can proceed to setting it up. The documentation states that SAR Manager needs to know where rescued pilots are to be delivered to. Each side needs at least one such safe zone, or they can't perform SAR missions. Since the mission I'm creating is only playable for blue, I'll only add one such zone. I've decided that for this mission, a safe zone is going to be in Anapa. Let's zoom in on Anapa to place the trigger zone on the tarmac where I feel players should deliver their evacuees to. This looks like a nice place. I place a trigger zone, name it Anapa Base, and reduce radius to 500. Next, I set type from circular to quad point. Not because it is required, but because I can craft a much nicer zone. Yeah, I am sometimes like that. There. Oh yes, and I also color this zone blue, just for me. To tell Tsar Manager that this is a safe zone, we need to add an attribute, Tsar Base. This tells DML that this is a zone where players can return evacuees to. I then enter the value blue, to tell DML that only blue players are permitted to complete their Tsar missions here. If I leave this field empty, all sites, red and blue, would be permitted to complete their missions here. Again, when in doubt, simply look into the documentation. At this point, we have added full Tsar capability to our mission. In all, adding some modules and placing a trigger zone should take you about a minute. Before we go any further, it's a good idea to test if everything is working properly. To do that, we'll add some player-controlled units. First, we add a blue player hog that crosses over the airfield south to north at 200 feet, 240 knots. The plan here is, once the mission starts, we'll eject from the hog and when the parachute hits the ground, we expect that a Tsar mission is created. We'll then grab a chopper and rescue the guy, dropping him off inside the rescue zone. So next, we need player-controlled rescue helicopters. I'll put them right inside the Tsar zone, so players have a hint where to return to. For convenience, I place all helos as hot from ground. By default, troop transport helicopters are Huey, Hip and Hind so I place one each. As visual cue, I also add a static red fire truck here, so players have it a little bit easier to find the place 
where to return to. Like this. Maybe another one. Now, let's run the mission to check that everything works. And here's a pro tip. Whenever you add DML modules and are then starting the mission for the first time, look at the messages that these modules print out. This helps you to make sure that all modules have loaded successfully and that they are working. If a module has failed loading, you'll see a warning here. Then make sure that all modules are accounted for. Alright, one warning, no errors and all modules are accounted for. We are good to go. Once we jump in the Hawk's cockpit, we eject immediately. Switch to F10 map and there's the parachute symbol. To monitor altitude, click on it. When the altitude stops changing, the pilot has reached the ground. A few seconds later, Autozar detects that an ejected pilot has touched down and creates a Tsar mission. Note the new unit that is created on the map and the text message that is broadcast to all blue players. This successfully completes the Autozar ability test. A new Tsar mission is created automatically when an ejected pilot touches down. Note that this of course also works for AI pilots, but getting AI to reliably eject in a predictable fashion is difficult to arrange for test purposes, so I eject as player and force the issue. Now it's time to grab the Huey and test Tsar Manager's functionality itself. Right after entering the cockpit, take note of the two fire trucks for reference. Then check the Tsar menu from communications. It lists one active Tsar mission. Heading 209, half a mile. From here we also confirm that we are sitting inside the Tsar mission Anapa base. So this is where we return to after we pick up the pilot. To make it easier for us, we'll simply head for the two fire trucks on our return trip. Visual cues like this make the difference between a mission and an enjoyable mission. We are now underway to pick up our former self and if you're wondering about the janky video, yeah, I switched to VR. DCS is the killer app for VR and it's nowhere as obvious as it is in helicopters. I'm heading for the blue smoke, another Tsar Manager feature, and then intend to slide in for a landing in front of the parachute. Yep, the message comes up and we have loaded our former self. You may have noticed that we loaded the soldier unit while the pilot model remained on the ground. This is a limitation of DCS. Tsar Manager waits 3 minutes before it removes the pilot model and we made the rescue in less than that. Right, we are heading for the fire trucks. Note how easy they make it for us to identify the correct spot. And I'll land close to them. And here's the success message. Tsar Manager checks out fine and I can drop the VR HMD. Alright, for something that supposedly only takes a minute, 
We are pushing the 15 minutes mark. Let's take a break and we'll pick this up again in part two.